friends welcome back to another video on this channel in today's video i will show you guys how i made this self balancing car basically the idea is as you can see i have two wheels on both sides and those two wheels basically just twi twist to balance the whole car the way it works is quite simple as you can see here on the center i have an mpu 6050 mounted that mounting sensor basically it's a gyroscope it can detect the angle the car is at So say for example it's supposed to be like this for it being straight and balanced now say it's like this the sensor can detect that it will then ask the car to twist the turn the wheels and move backwards to give the forward uh, give a little bit of torque in the forward direction so it will basically try and balance the car as you can see here when i move when the car is uh, trying to fall forward the car will move forward to give a little bit of backward torque and turn the car backwards So it's basically a constant loop called PID. Uh, in that system, basically, it is taking the little sensor data, the feeding it through the Arduino here. As you can see, I'm using the Arduino Uno. It takes that data, it processes it, is then sends data to the uh, two motors. Then it takes that data and uh, from the uh, like basically the sensor reads the data again. It sends it back to the Arduino, back to the motors, and it is a loop that continues on and on until. like basically the system will realize on that so as you can see it, uh, the it is a, obviously it's a naturally inherent uh, naturally like no unstable system so if i turn it off as you can see I, i even if i try to balance it it will just naturally fall off uh, so it, it, as you can see also there is nothing else inside there's just as you can see on the bottom i have two uh, uh, 12 volt motors mounted onto this little platform here this is just some hardwood and then i have two wheels like It's so just standard uh, bio motor wheels that I have mounted onto these motors. As you can see, they are attached using these standard uh, L-shaped clamps. They are screwed onto this platform here, as you can see. So for wiring as well as power, let me tell you guys how it works. So obviously, as you can see, I have this uh, lithium polymer battery. This is a 12 volt uh, to uh, 12 volt uh, like basically three cell power cell lithium polymer battery. Uh, the way it works is simple. You see, I have this L two nine eight N motor here, uh, motor controller here. This guy takes in twelve volts from the battery. As you can see now, this connector is a little sketchy. Uh, this black, like this sharpie on black one, represents your ground, and this was the positive. But uh, for most cases like this, it's mostly fine. So uh, basically, that is how I get power into the system. As you can see, so the way I have it set up is when the power goes in here. Uh, it obviously powers our L two nine eight N motor controller, and what happens is if you guys can see here, there is two more green smaller wires coming off of the same ports, which goes round here and into this controller here. This is a, a five volt uh, constant. Uh, like this is actually an adjustable controller. Like it uh, basically you can send it uh, like tell it how much voltage it should uh, adjust, and it's a constant adjuster as well. So basically. Uh, whatever variance there is in the input voltage the output voltage will be a rock solid in this case i have set it to 5 volts from these one of them is for setting the out maximum output amperage and one of them is for setting the uh, voltage so i have set it to be a constant 5 volts now as you can see from this wire here coming out of here i'm going into this breadboard this breadboard is what powers everything uh, off of this basically i have these two wires here now the reason i'm using a breadboard is just for future like I like to have platforms built instead of just building a project. So, so I'm using a breadboard here. As you can see, it's just connection of two wires. This black one going into the Arduino, as well as this grey one going in. Uh, this green one going into the Arduino. So these are power and ground wires. Uh, this Arduino simply has the. Uh, as you can see in here, I have my power coming in here and here. And this is what powers our uh, MPU 6050 as well. Now I leave the. Uh, wiring diagram for this in a description because it's quite sensitive i found that some of the pins don't work very well when i uh, tried to make them be these uh, these controller pins but they, uh, other than that basically yeah uh, the so the schematics for all these connections will be down in the description uh, but mainly let me just give you a brief overview so for the mpu 6050 it obviously uses uh, the i2c connections So we'll use uh, the, uh, this is uh, ground and again sketch, kind of sketchy ground wire there, but uh, the this is VCC, this is ground, this is SCL SDA, and then I have my uh, int which is interrupt wire. Now your interrupt wire will always go to pin number two only, as you can see 
on the Arduino Uno. Uh, the power and grounds are coming straight from the Arduino Uno as well as you can see there. Uh, for the I2C of course we have uh, out to see here A4 and A5. So your green one here A5 which is going into SCL and SDA purple one here going into A4. So S, uh, SCL will be A4, SDA will be A5. For motoring wi uh, wiring, uh, basically obviously our l 2980 ns have the variable speed controllers as you saw there it can adjust its speed as well. So the two speed pins, these are the two speed pins on the two sides. Uh, if you are new here, new to these, basically there is a jumper you can plug off of these last and the first two pylons. Basically normally there is a jumper between these two that will give it basically full speed. If you take that jumper off. And plug a jump, uh, wire like this into the uh, the backward most pin basically the one facing the outer side not the one facing the inner side then you can give it PWM control as well for the motor speed uh, so basically these two wires as you can see they will go over here onto uh, pins 9 and 10 on your Arduino just uh, like roughly I would recommend just roughly uh, plug it in and tilt it a little bit here and there check what it's doing uh, uh, you will also have to calibrate your um, this guy but we'll get on to that in just a second when I talk about the code so uh, after calibrating that I just recommend just plug these wires in uh, roughly and just check what it's doing and then you can obviously very easily flip the polarity later down the line uh, for these guys it's simply just going all the way from pin number here uh, this would be pin number let's see five six seven eight so yeah those are the four uh, uh, basically you can call it like signal pins and then 9 and 10 which are your PWM uh, speed pins so that's basically it for wiring uh, yeah so uh, physically building it uh, uh, is like not very complicated as you can see uh, you just need two motors mounted onto the bottom uh, now one thing you want to keep in mind is to reduce those as you saw it starts shaking around like that quite a bit so you want to have the batteries and stuff as high of the uh, like as much raised of the platform as possible to keep a COG, uh, CG high. Uh, that way basically what happens is when it's tilting say like this, uh, the motors want to obviously want to correct it to push it like that. They'll push it back like this to push it forward. Now what is happening is when your CG is quite high, when it pushes it, the torque going through that obviously we know torque is forced into the distance between the point of application which in this case is the bottom of the wheels here as well as the center of gravity. That is what determines the torque. So when we will move the uh, it a little bit backwards, your torque will be sorry. When we move it a backwards a little bit, then the torque increases significantly as high the CG from the wheels can be. Now in my case, as you saw, my battery is just lying here like this, something like this. Uh, this is just uh, Velcro on this side. Uh, this is Velcro drip. Don't don't uh, like puncture a hole or anything into the battery, please. It's just taped on there and this is this is just stapled on there using some uh, one of those giant office stapler things as well as super glued on there for safety. So yeah basically that uh, that is another thing you would want to do is like I'd recommend doing some system like this for your battery where you can fine position it fine tune it. So obviously as you can see naturally my system is stable in this state without the battery but uh, of course you want it to be unstable so that you will see the oscillations like it moving because that's obviously the whole point otherwise we could have just added another wheel down there and made it work so I naturally want to keep it a little bit off center so it you can see those oscillations but you want to keep it pretty balanced uh, so obviously because we are working with quite limited uh, here because these are not exactly very not only are they not very accurate they are also not very fast there is obviously quite a few delays uh, here uh, in this uh, microcontroller so when we are pushing the thing up and down uh, we don't want that much delay uh, so we want to keep it pretty level pretty stable but yeah that's basically it for physically wiring it up now I'll quickly switch over to the computer and I'll show you guys the code now alright so as you can see I've switched over to the computer there are two codes I would like to discuss here first is obviously the code mainly used for the system but before that as I mentioned in that the calibration code so this is just the MPU 6050 calibration so standard calibration code uh, this is included here uh, in the uh, file here as you can see so basically um, 
this guy this is not my code of course this is the standard itc library code uh, obviously pre i forgot uh, like you need your itc libraries for this just uh, look up your i2c dev and mp6050 library you'll find them on github uh, just download those install those but yeah um, this code you just want to run this you'll get a f uh, couple numbers uh, you'll get all your offsets those are the off basically you want to put the uh, uh, platform sta stably on uh, flat ground like hold it there stable uh, or rather i'd recommend placing it on something st uh, stable so that you have precise measurements that is the value which we will be targeting of course there are always offsets uh, in uh, our systems because uh, we are uh, DIY things so there is obviously errors in manufacturing as well as in our mounting it might not be perfectly level each time uh, we mount it everyone's is a little bit different so we want to calibrate it based on our final system so we want to run that code and you'll get a few data a uh, couple values here which you will put into this code this is the main code uh, of the system uh, the way it works is quite simple uh, obviously this library I was talking just put this in Google and you'll get uh, get the the first one is only going to be a github the uh, github um, uh, the github library basically uh, for controlling it basically you don't need to do this uh, this one uh, actually you don't need to even do PID tuning this has auto PID tuning on inbuilt so what I would say is uh, First of all, obviously, this is what I was talking about here with the pinouts, but I'll also have the schematic for this one labeled in the description. I usually just leave it here, but for this time, I'll leave, include the schematic as well. Um, for uh, these, uh, other than that, for explaining about explaining the code, let's get started on to doing that. First of all, we want to obviously check whether our I2C devices are working and can, whether or not they are uh, successfully connected or if connection is failed this is the standard i2c library thingy here i will do that we'll check it assuming that it is then we'll obviously initialize them and uh, we'll also obviously here is where the offsets come in this is what i was talking about just get those offsets from your uh, library which i sorry the code i showed earlier and place it here in these uh, six six values here these are your offsets after that we'll after initializing everything and starting everything is again initializing all of those enabling the interrupt detection etc etc again standard i2c library stuff um, this is the main thing basically what we are doing here is we are checking the FIFO count which is uh, the MPU's way of almost you can say like getting the angle only it's not quite that it's a bit little bit different uh, and uh, the thing on the screen you see here FIFA overflow basically what this is is um, when we tilt the car say like it's going above like it tumbles forward or backwards then obviously we don't want the motors to continue spinning for no reason it will obviously not do anything so in in that case what we are doing is we are setting it such that when it goes above a certain threshold uh, then it will just uh, go overflow like FIFA overflow and it will just shut down all the motors and all the systems so we can reset the system uh, uh, later on uh, for the rest of it basically we are just getting all the values and uh, like this is just a lot of calculations really but the main pr idea behind it is quite simple we are going to take that value which we got we are going to try and make it as close to 0000, 000, 000, 000 as possible uh, 0000, 000 meaning uh, your 0 on your x 0 on your y as well as accelerations uh, so we want it to be 0 on all of those so we'll try and get it there as good as possible uh, in another one with this particular code is that this has PWM control as I mentioned before so in many codes you'll find online they just simply if it's above this threshold it will turn on the motors at full power uh, otherwise it will turn off the motors if it's under a threshold and then again turn on the motors in reverse and full power in another way uh, in the opposite direction this code obviously does not do that it has PWM output which means that basically when it is obviously if it's too far ahead it will speed up the motors fully uh, but under a certain threshold as you guys saw it tries and keeps the motor speeds low to um, to try and basically get it to stabilize uh, instead of just vibrating uh, violently vi uh, shaking up you saw there uh, it uh, sometimes still ends up shaking up but that is due to a different reason you see uh, as I mentioned before my battery is actually mounted using uh, velcro tape now the thing about velcro tape is it's great for adjusting you can put it wherever you want but the problem is uh, if it gets a little bit loose 
when it's pushing forward what is end up happening is the cg itself is moving forward and backward so that oscillation combines with the oscillation of the car itself and it kind of re creates a resonance there and it ends up completely going uh, like it completely ends up vibrating vigorously and unable to stop so the only real option is to just press the battery a little bit and basically get it to adhere a little bit better so it will prevent those oscillations which will in turn prevents those oscillations which you saw there but that's basically it um yeah that's pretty much it this again here as you see these are just comparing values so we are just taking it comparing it with respect to our threshold setting it to a pwm frequency and writing it down into the motors or rather sending it to the motors to uh, basically perform our actions uh, and completing the PID loop. So yeah, that's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.